So. Cheers. Welcome. Welcome back to the Badlands podcast. So uh, today we're here to talk a little bit about our uh, Rubicon trip that we just did uh, last weekend. It was, uh, a good, it was a good one. Yeah, 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 for sure. And so we've got uh, Scott DeCurtis here, and uh, he was the co-dog in the uh, the Forerunner, and so the white ship box. The white ship box. <laughs> yep. And so. Uh, it was the, the trip like I mean the Rubicon I, I feel like anybody that's freaking into off-roading you know re regardless of desert or you, you know, know it you it's, know it. it's yeah. like you you live around the world you almost know it right? yeah and it's just it's one of those iconic must do like lifetime so obviously people do it like all the time but for most people it's like a lifetime kind of bucket list situation absolutely right? you know? and and for me like 100% like that was a bucket list trip that was like at some point need to make this happen and so uh I mean, we've been talking about it for like years yeah right? but it yeah. was just you know coming obviously all of us coming from the desert scene yeah it's it's a culmination of many years of like acquiring the right rigs and getting that whole process going well right? it, so. exactly so like from my background like from being uh, a rover guy it was you know that the the most built truck I had uh, when I had the Rover was 33s, lockers front and rear. Was that the green one? No, that, oh, was, no, that the, was the white one. one. Yeah. yeah, and it was, you know, it was, I, I'm sure you could do it, but it would have been, right. you, you, yeah. you would have, you know, it would have been pretty spicy. Well, it's funny because you always look at, you like, you read perspectives online, you, you look at photos, stuff like that, and some people are like, oh, you could do it in a stock rig, you know, yeah. or, and then others are like, no, you need 40s and links and, you know, so... I guess it's just a matter of how much you want to challenge yourself. Yeah, you know, so. no doubt. And, and it's like you can do. There was there was one dude there that had a that that Nick breaks everything dude oh, yeah, had, yeah. had his Ranger in yeah. there that was. I mean, I think it's got a little lift on it and you know some decent tires. And he like blew his steering rack or yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so obviously we'll get into that yeah. <laughs> talking yeah. about that because we saw him out there. But uh, I, I think just that the Rubicon Trail being you know as as big of a name as it is it was just something that at some point had to happen and you know with our our DMC group nobody had a vehicle really that that could do it I mean I guess you could do it in some of the bigger pre-runners yeah and, maybe well you know you put some sliders on right. it and some bumpers you right. can you could potentially do it yeah, yeah. Uh, but so so you, I think, hit me up. Yeah, I don't know. That must have been like May, maybe ish. Yeah, May ish, and I was like, "Bro, I'm turning forty this year. I want to do something for my birthday. Like, let's 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 go do the Rubicon." Yeah, and I think it was it was and it, it, my th my thought process was like, you know, we just finished putting the 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 crawl box and the Forerunner mm -hmm. before we went to Idaho. Yeah. Like, Kind of uh, some stuff uh, and and all the work you had been putting into it. I was like, I think I think your truck's like good. Like, yeah. That's, well, that's well, and that happen, that uh, the 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 dual cases and the the Forerunner that was actually last oh, that year. That was last year. You're right. And so yeah. yeah, so it was like right out of the box. Obviously, it, it wasn't a situation where I would have just run right. and right. taken it just right. because it was kind of an untested ride but after going through the hammers and then i took it back out you're to, right after a year of playing around at, at king of the hammers and then going out at you sure again like you you had some confidence in the, in the that's right exactly and then yeah. and then obviously with with it being you know as built as it is the 37s you know sliders bumpers lockers yeah. it's kind of like okay that's I, I would say you could definitely do it with less yeah. but it made it still challenging yet enjoyable enjoyable like it was uh, I, I was thinking about it um on my way over here and i was i was thinking like yeah we could have done it with less like you say but to be able to soak it all in more and mm -hmm. enjoy the trip more sure that's what i think really helped with the rigs that went with us yeah know? so exactly and so 
like May, you hit me up or like, hey, my, I want to do a birthday trip. I was thinking about the Rubicon and I was like, what are you going to take, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's why I'm calling you are up. We, are we taking the 400? <laughs> you doing like a four-wheel drag swap? <laughs> and so you're like, no, I'm going to co-dog with you. And so then uh, I think we kind of hit up our, our you know main core group yeah. and... I mean, not not many of what. There's only three or four people that may have had. I mean, we were trying to get Mecho. Yeah, and he's still trying to finish his rig up, and yeah, his you know, Bronco just had been yeah, done, right? Which yeah. would have been crazy. I was telling him, I was like, you know, go ahead and send it, and and he was, you know, he was gonna try to make it happen, and then we hit up uh, Ryan Podell. And uh, so it, we were really looking for somebody that had like done the trail before, right? Yeah, Cause correct. then we wanted to be able to just like have a little bit of, of uh, like common knowledge sure. of the trail, right? Sure. Like, yeah, you can research it, you can figure it out, but like to really have somebody that had done it before was kind of like, that's Definitely. what's going to make or break it. Right. Definitely. And then, I mean, doing that trail, like I would say compared to say like a Mojave road, the Rubicon was, it wasn't like you could get, you know, I don't really know if you could take a wrong turn and get completely lost. Yeah, I think it was. But, yeah. but it's, you know, and I didn't really know this at the time, like, you know, unless you've kind of done the trail and you're hearing about like, oh yeah, you, you park at Loon and, you know, then you end up all the way in Tahoe. And, you know, from coming from the desert scene, it's like, well, if you're talking about from this point to this point, there's so many different, like, points you can kind of interject and, yeah. and get into a trail. Right. Right. But uh, this is so remote in the forest that it's not that at all. Yeah, so it's, uh, what do they call it? Des it's Desolation Wilderness, part of the Desolation Wilderness mm -hmm. or something like that, or Desolation, Desolation Forest, I don't know, something like that. Yeah, but so... So anyways, uh, we, we kind of, we hit up our, our, you know, buddies. We've got, you know, Mai Tai's building the uh, Sequoia on one tons, not done yet. Metro, we mentioned, Bronco was just done like the week prior, right. untested. Yeah. Uh, Mikey's building his uh, crawler. It seems like all of us are kind of getting into the, the, the going slow off-road instead of the well, it's uh, the a bit faster. easier on the kids, you know? Sure, sure. So, uh, yeah. But so... Uh, just through some of the contacts that we've made over the past couple of years, uh, we put together uh, Caleb, the the meat man, uh, who helps us out at all the cleanups. Met him on on Desert Rangers. He's only invited if he brings meat. Exactly. <laughs> no, that's that's not true. But uh, and then he uh, his co dog was Colton, who also helps us uh, cook. Yeah. Uh, so and they were in a is it a CJ seven yeah. CJ five? Yeah, I mean it was an older CJ, so it, it's yeah. got to be a five or a seven for sure. Yeah, I'm not a Jeep yeah. guy, so yeah. couldn't tell you. Yeah. Uh, he uh, invited probably along. the least least built. Yeah, right, uh, yeah, and, and yeah. I mean, and it's but still just as capable. And right? I think it's a Dana thirty. Yeah, it's a, it was tiny on the front, but when you look at how small those vehicles are, it's yeah. Like, yeah. And then he's got uh, lockers, front and rear, thirty fives, and and so again that was probably the least built yeah. and then his buddy Ezra has a newer JK JL or JK yeah I, but built like yeah. length front rear coilover yeah. Yeah. did it yeah. was coilover bypass it in was the front? no just coilover. just coilover yeah and so that thing was a beast um, and so he had his son uh, Asher riding with him who I believe was seven so pretty yeah, cool that to see really cool yeah. uh, and then Hayden and Ashton Drove all the way down from uh, Alberta, Calgary. Uh, they they live like in the outskirts of Calgary. So to get to your folks' place was a, a twenty hour drive for them. Yeah. So they what they left uh, they left the Tuesday before or something like yeah. that. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And then they yeah. kind of daisy chained yeah. it down, and went to yeah. Bend and a couple other spots, uh, and then uh, Nick from Loose and Lost, uh, he drove up from he. He was doing some stuff with Alloy Armor, which is his new uh, spray paint company yeah. uh, that he's doing with uh, Michael Cox, uh, uh, Factory BS, uh, big Bronco guys. Yeah. And so anyways, he, they were doing something with the paint there. They, I think they were at the 
the I want to say the distributor or the manufacturer, the manufacturer. Or right. and so he had just flown back from he was Chicago? he was like he, he was yeah. in Oklahoma then he went to Chicago yeah. on Wednesday lands and 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 it was like earlier in the week he hit me up and he's like I'm in because and I had asked him like months ago like when we first came up with it you know we we're trying to kind of put together yeah. a list of rigs and the, the other thing too is we didn't want to put it out on the form mm -hmm. and then have what uh, I just felt like for a trip like this you kind of want it to be like a tight knit I think with it being our first time you know and just uh just wanting to make sure it was like a group of people that we were we were aware of or who have done it before sure or, and or, rigs you know, are knew all what sorted. they were getting into sure right? so. uh and then so so uh nick was was solo and then we had us in the uh the ship box uh forerunner 87 solid axle swap forerunner 37s i think i already kind of mentioned what that had going on so that was the five rigs um and then uh we we somehow picked the weekend was the, the 19th through yeah so like i was looking at the weekends available and i knew i wanted to do it around my birthday and it's like july is kind of a shit show for the rubicon in regards to like there's all these organized events and when the organized events are going on you have to be like part of the event to be on the trail i don't i don't know how like strict they keep that but it was like do we really want to be on the trail when an event's going yeah, on so it's like literally the one weekend in july mm -hmm. which i think is typically like the third weekend in july which also happened to be around my birthday where it was like okay here's the the open weekend like this is what we're going to try and make happen i think it'll work out perfectly sure. we'll be right in between the events i mean i'm sure it'll still be busy but we'll have a blast yeah you know like yeah so and uh so so what we did was we left Thursday night or Thursday afternoon. afternoon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You picked uh, me up at my house with. I already had the trailer and the Forerunner, obviously at my house. Uh, you picked me up with the power wagon. We hooked up the trailer, loaded the Forerunner on. We actually had your your folks with us yeah. too. They were going back. My folks had come down to visit because my. Uh, my older son had just graduated from preschool, so they came down to yeah for his graduation. So they got a free ride. Yeah, back so home. it just kind of yeah, worked yeah, out, yeah. and so we set out. Uh, basically, wanted to get out of LA traffic, like up over the grapevine before got bad. It got bad, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so that was was pretty smooth sailing. And then uh, Nick and uh, Nick's from Long Beach, and so. He was just driving up Thursday morning, and it worked out that we met up with him on the road, uh, just outside of like Taft, like just yeah, on the bottom like side, that, of the right. yeah, side of the grapevine. Yeah, just other side of the grapevine. And so uh, we we were kind of cruising along the highway for a little bit with him, and then we pulled off because you needed fuel, and we wanted some food, and so. Uh, we fueled up, got food, and while we're waiting in line at Baja Fresh, I'm like, hey, Nick, you want me to ride with you? And and this is a fucking Forerunner <laughs> with... A bimini top. With a bimini yeah. top, and it's it, going through uh, on the five there, it was 100 degrees is what your temp mm -hmm. gauge said. Mm -hmm. And it's it was probably at that point like five or six at night when we were cruising through yeah, there. it was probably like six o'clock, yeah. Yeah, and so... Seven, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> So I'm like, hey, like Nick, and I don't know Nick, like I've met Nick, I talked to him on Instagram, that's how I met him, and uh, I've met him a couple times at like the Terror Crew event and at King of the Hammers, but both times. like hit or miss and yeah, passing, right? the dude's yeah. just slanging yeah. shirts, and yeah. so it's... <laughs> He's always busy. Yeah, yeah. Not, I mean, it's, it's, it's weird with the Instagram thing, because it's like you... Like, I feel like I, I kind of know him more than, like, meeting him twice. It's weird, huh? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, anyway, so I, I was like, hey, dude, you want me just to ride with you so you have somebody to, to talk to because you had your folks right. in there. Yeah. And yeah. and so we were cruising down the road. Uh, we uh, basically... He's got a. He doesn't even have a radio in there. He's got like a giant the boom portable boombox. <laughs> Dude, those things are good. Though. Yeah, the, bumps. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, literally from I think it was like I want to say five and a half hours from where we stopped. Probably uh, that something exit, like that. Sounds we just right. talked the whole way, and yeah. it's it's so like 
If you ever have a chance to, you know, ride with somebody that you don't really know well on a road trip, like that's a good way to Five get to hours? know. Five yeah. hours? Hey, you're going to know each other and just, for sure. Just such a cool dude. I mean, yeah. obviously you see his art and I'm, I've been a fan of that for Talented so Talented guy. So, yeah. Sure. And, and, and it's like you see his his kind of persona online and it's like 100% as advertised, which yeah. is, is super that's cool. Awesome. Um, and so, yeah, we, we get up to your folks' place probably about, I don't know, like 10 or... 10-ish, probably. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, after me almost running out of fuel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so then uh, we hit, hit the rack. I think we had a couple beers and, and hit the rack pretty early. And the plan was to leave the house at like 10 or so -ish. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we had come up with a plan where... Um, Hayden was going to meet us at the ranch in the morning, right? And then um, I, we were trying to meet up at the store mm -hmm. by a certain time. I think the idea was to try and be at the trailhead at Loon Lake at like noon, yeah. right? Yep. Obviously, you know, that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we were close, you know? And it was, so it was like... Uh, we weren't... <sighs> so I think we kind of woke up. We, had, we I kind of showed you guys the ranch a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but... Then, but um, we were, I think Hayden, and, and the dude literally drives 20 hours with his girlfriend towing, he, he's got a, I think F-250 or F-350? Yeah, I think it was a 350. On a trailer, yeah. and, and he's like texting me, he's like, I'm sorry that we're like 20 minutes late. I'm like, bro, you just drove 20 hours? Like, you're good. Just take your time. When you get here, you get here. And so we had... It's not like we're going to leave with that. <laughs> yeah, and, and in the morning, I remember, because I just basically threw everything in the Forerunner. I mean, it took us like two hours to try and figure out how to pack the yeah. Forerunner, right? It well, was like, it was a mission. And, right? and it's like, it's so funny, because it's like the mouse, I've had that truck for 14 years, and it's like... You know where everything th goes, This right? goes here, this yeah. goes here. The Forerunner... I'm, this is really the biggest trip I've ever yeah. done because everything else it's has always been, been base camp stuff yeah. like oh we don't need much. you need a cooler right yeah it's and, like, and, it, and it's like the, sure you could just throw everything in there and you, you know you see all the videos online where just shit's flopping around like <laughs> salmon in the back and I, I'm not You're that like, guy. Now we know like, why, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not that guy. Like, I'm like, shit needs to be tied down. We've got this this howl is mounted back there with a propane uh, tank. I don't want uh, you know to come off of something and that thing to come through the fucking windshield. This thing was yeah. crucial, by the way, yeah. because it was like you can't have open campfires out yeah. in the wilderness, right? Yeah. So it was nice to have some some oh, ambiance. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But yeah, but, so yeah. so uh, we we Hayden gets there. Uh, so we've got Nick, Hayden, and the Forerunner. We take off and hit the store in Georgetown, uh, meet up with uh, Caleb and Ezra. Yeah. And they were both, both the Jeep dorks, <laughs> they were like, no, we're trailering to Loon. Yeah. And we'll, we'll drop off at the, the overflow, like the spillway parking, and we're going to leave our rigs there and you know basically we're, they only wanted to go to their plan all along was only to go all the way to to like i guess if you drop a trailer at loon the idea is that you basically go to buck lake and you come back yeah and we'll get into more of the trail in, in a little bit probably. sure but but so yeah so they were like okay we're gonna trailer all sure the way, right? well and then we had we had, like you and i had never done the trail before right, right. and then hayden obviously had come down that far and it was like uh, kind of in the before we even embarked on the mission i was like i want to do the whole we gotta thing we got to do the whole thing and and right? hayden it's our first time right? he's, he, we gotta he's gotta right. do the whole thing like right. we can't just he you came know, all the way down from canada get like our yeah. ankle yeah. wet and get right. out like right. no we're gonna send it so so we uh we unload the we, trying to find a, a spot to park because there, there's a ton At of trailers. spillway, there's not a lot of space. Yeah, which, so which, and then I think like up around the corner, like once we kind of started the trail, there was yeah. more there. But you got to get your trailer up there, though. Yeah, yeah, it's not. And, and so uh, Ezra finds a spot, and then uh, Colton towed with his Dodge towed Caleb's Jeep, and so. Oh, we're we're like the us Toyota guys are like cool. You dudes figure it out. We're gonna air down. We're gonna air down. Yeah. <laughs> and so I I get out my air down stuff and and Caleb and Colton they're kind of parked like kind of a downhill like right by the Ranger uh, little hut. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's you know a slight downhill going towards the tow vehicle. Well, Caleb fires his truck up or his Jeep up, and he starts to back off the trailer and the fucking uh, thing dies 
and then it starts to roll forward like it does, you know, when you're on a downhill. Well, he caught it. He <laughs> caught it the first time. So he started it started back up. It stalled. He caught it, right? Yeah. So uh, whether or not it was Z-brake or something, whatever. He's, no, he doesn't he have still, e Or yeah. he, he was still in gear or yeah. something. I don't know. So then he goes to start it again. And then he goes to drop the clutch. And it was starting to stall again. And so then he's like, oh, shit. Pushes on the brakes. And... The, Freaking pedal just goes to the floor, dude. <laughs> goes, to the, <laughs> goes to the floor. And I'm watching him like slowly creep forward. I'm like, buddy, you're going the wrong way. Yeah. You're going the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. So he proceeds to drive off the front of the trailer and smash the shit out of this <laughs> tailgate. Cold, cold oh tailgate God. of his Dodge. And it was just like one of those things where all of us, like, I came around the forerunner because I was on the, the driver's side and I'm like, what did you do? I like, was like, did I just see that happen? Like, I only see that on YouTube or something. Like, oh did we God. just do this? So, well, the best thing about it too was like, Colton was still like in the Dodge with his foot on the yeah. brake to like, <laughs> right? And at that moment, I don't think he actually realized that Caleb had gone all the way off the trailer enough to just completely annihilate yeah. his tailgate. Well, he, he was, thought it like <laughs> caught somewhere, you know? He was telling me, he's like, he's like, he knows he's too close. He knows he's too close. And then he just watched him just punt him, basically. And so, oh, so the trailhead, now it's like, it's, we, we were shooting for noon. It's probably yeah, two. It's probably maybe? two. Yeah. And, I'm pulling winch line to get him. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to the get him yet. back on yeah. because he was like fully over. Yeah. Yeah. So he's sitting on what was he on the axle? He was he's... basically his his front drag link and tie rod, essentially like <laughs> banana, <laughs> but fully bananaed around like the the, the trailer jack, yeah. right? And then so I mean, and then that basically created like a he was like the backside of his front tires were pinned against the front of the trailer, right? So it was just like. Winch was necessary. There was no way he was driving out. Sure. Of that, right. It was, yeah. yeah. So so we pull him. I pull him backwards, and then uh, I kind of have him like tethered down. Basically, I'm his brakes. So we yeah. get to a flat spot, yeah. start to assess the situation, and uh, Ezra thought he might have some brake lines that right. would work. So he's looking through his tools. We end up just vice gripping it. I feel like we talked about that. Like. <laughs> In the What to Pack podcast about she how brings vice, vice, grips. vice grips are key. I'm hoping to get a vice grip sponsorship because that would be key because we literally have used this. Wait, thing. so, so, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, obviously now, but it's like, so basically it turns out his front passenger brake line had a complete, like, gapping hole in it, right? Like it had been wearing or something. I think it I rubbed know, on the right? shock. It must have rubbed on yeah. the shock, right? And it finally blew, like the inner liner finally blew. So it was literally just littered his whole front passenger yeah, hub, just, right? So so we, we, we pinch it off and then he's just like, Well, I guess I'll just drive with three you know, three, three brakes. brakes. Yeah. And then he's like telling me about He's like, Oh yeah, my rear drums really are horrible. <laughs> they don't even work at all. So I'm like, you got one brake? <laughs> <laughs> so so we end up just, you know, going for it and that we're about to we we the, us Toyota dudes are like airing down still and I, I go over and take some photos of the spillway and I'm yeah. kind of letting them sort it out and uh, then he's like yeah I, I think I'm good to go and I walk up to the front of the Jeep and I'm like dude what about that drag lake the thing is just completely <laughs> rainbowed and he's like oh no it's like that and I'm like Dude, I you, don't think so. You Jeep people are different. <laughs> like the Toyota guys get the bad rap, but it's Jeep oh, folks. Oh, man. But so, uh, anyways, then we so we we set out on the trail. And yeah. So it's like three o'clock on Friday afternoon. We finally like okay, let's get our shit together. <laughs> let's get on the trail, right? Yeah. So. Um, so yeah. So we go gatekeeper. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All good. Um, just kind of, basically, it's not even, I, I felt like it wasn't even that gnarly of a no. gatekeeper, really. No, it was no. just kind of like, you wet your teeth, it's just a small kind of like boulder garden, essentially. Yeah, it was fairly um, chill. Yeah, it was pretty chill. Like, already in a, in a traffic jam, though, right? Because yeah. there's like three people trying to come out, we're trying to go up, but it's like, whatever, we're in no rush, right? Sure. So, yeah, so what we get through gatekeeper, um, you get to the top of the slabs or i don't know what that section was called i, th I right think it's there, slabs you know? like right before you drop in and yeah. there's like the beer tree at the bottom right right, right, uh, right 
And so there was like already a couple broken folks, like uh, due to a couple, there was a couple XJs that had one XJ. Steering box ripped, ripped off, or off the frame. Right? And yeah. it's like, oh, bud. Like, they just <laughs> finished welding it up though. So yeah. it was like, oh, right on. Yeah. 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 So we, we passed out some stickers to them. And then uh, as we're, we're uh, Caleb. We was, were about to drop it. Well, Caleb right? though, he's like a little nervous about his brake situation. So okay. he wanted right. to uh, be tethered. And, and luckily, we had brought Hayden the uh, that that backcountry four wheel drive recovery kit. Oh, yeah, he, yeah. he he had won yeah, it in uh, whatever, the, yeah. the Sloan Motorsports thing that that I did. Uh, he had won this, the the uh, raffle, and so he, we used that kinetic kinetic rope to kind of lower him down. But before we were kind of rigging it up and you know talking about what we were gonna do. And we see the uh, the yellow F one hundred. Yeah, uh, that thing was badass. Yeah, that was rad. And and so that's uh, I think it's seventy four Ford crew, and uh, yeah. he was towing up a Bronco that had lost a drive line. Rear drive line. So the guy only had front wheel drive. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. he was just you know tractoring him up, and right behind him was uh, Ultra Four Jones yep. in that yep. uh, the yep. seven three yeah. double cab or crew cab uh, long bed. Yeah. Uh, so that was like our first encounter of like, it was kind of funny because the amount of people and we'll get into it more with the amount of people we met out there that were just like, you kind of know each other, you know, each other on Instagram, right? Yeah. You've, you've, you've talked here and there, texted, whatever, but you actually meet the person and it's just like, you know, yeah. like, holy cow. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's awesome. That was super cool. And so, uh, we chatted with them and that, and that kind of kept happening and it's like, the reason that you don't have a ton of trucks on a trail, which we only had five and it was like, we would make it through a section and then we would stop and talk or we'd see yeah. someone we knew. Yeah. It was just kind of that. Bro, it keeps prolonging it. Right? And so, so we, we chat with them for a second and, and then they, you know, were taking that Bronco out, uh, to the back to the trailers. And so we, we get Caleb down yeah, uh, and it was totally uneventful. Like that right. was literally yeah. totally mellow. The minor, yeah. Uh, and then uh, we get up to, we're we're hanging out at the bottom, and Hayden gets out, and he's like ghost riding the whip, and he gets on <laughs> gets on his truck. He's got it in double what low, you doing? and he's cleaning his windshield off, and I'm like, what the hell? Do you Canadian people or something else? Hey. And and like you'll have to look at the uh, the the photos. Like I I'll, I'll put a photo up. But this this Toyota that he's got is like completely raisin. Like there's not a straight panel on this good thing. And so anyways, we we're at like the beer tree, and Nick's like yeah I, I and and Nick was was because he had done the trail before. We kind of just he, he was, was kind of the trail the leader. Lead. Yeah. yeah. And so he's just kind of like yeah I just usually kind of just cruise up like the. There's like a million different routes in the slab, yeah. so it's kind of like a huge granite bowl in reality, right? And there's a few like steps that you climb down, but then kind of uh, bottom of the bowl, you kind of just end up at like basically the beer tree or whatnot, right? But um, you know, you can take a million different routes that way, right? Yeah. So it's just like <laughs> it's like a Hay skate park. Yeah. So like Hayden takes yeah, it literally is like a skate park for for four by fours, right? So like Hayden takes off to the right, we're like going up the center. Yeah. I'm like try that line over there, right? And like yeah. Nick's taking the line on the left, and it's just like you kind of all end up at the same spot, but it was. It's really cool. It, you know, honestly, like if I lived up there, it would be an awesome spot to just go and hang out for Yeah, day, right? absolutely. And just cruise around. But so, yeah, so bad. What? We get through We get through the slabs. Yeah, we get up to the, up the top. top. Again, yeah. stop, hang out. Right. Yeah. And then we make it to the next section, I believe, is whale bones. Whale bones or whale back or something and, like and that. And so you yeah, kind of yeah. cruise through that. It's like, it's like a pretty good... You know, a couple good sizes. A little bit rock. of like a good, like, it wasn't like a gnarly ledge, but it was a good, like, it was steep. You got to turn at the right time and, you, and it's really steep, right? Yeah. But it's like that granite has so much traction. Totally. So I was, yeah. And, and, it, and, and, you know, obviously I haven't done a ton of four wheeling in the, the forerunner, but it's like one of those things where you kind of pull up and you're like, oh shit, we're, we're driving up that. Yeah. Like, that's the trail. Yeah. Like, all right, cool. <laughs> And so, yeah, we, we kind of, I think we did like a little bit of a three point turn and then ended up driving right up. No yeah, problem. I forget. And yeah. so by the time there was a bit of a group up top or something too. Yeah. Was there was, there was some like Jeep dudes that yeah. broke some stuff. And so, uh, by the time we ended up making it up that the, uh, ultra four Jones and the 74, uh, Ford crew dude had caught back up to us. Yep. 
And so we, you know, I just, I took some shots of them going up, you know, and we, we, you know, shot the shit a little bit when, once we all made it up. And then the other dude with, that I brought up with the, the ranger, uh, I'm, I'm like, basically watching the he two was right Fords. behind them yeah he was in his yeah, yeah. he's got like a purple jeep i think yeah it was like a, it looked like a stock cj7 yeah or something and so like, so yeah. that dude is on on instagram and i followed him uh for he, he mountain bikes and he's into four-wheeling and I, that ranger he's got is his daily driver and so i'm i'm sitting there watching the fords go up and i look at him and i you know i, I just i'm like hey your nick breaks everything on instagram and he's like yeah and i'm like i'm bad lines good times so he's like oh right on dude and so he's like yeah i got the steering rack in in the back of my rig here and i'm going to fix my truck at buck lake i'm like sweet right on <laughs> which i guess his that ranger because it was at buck lake for two weeks is now known as like the the, the Buck Island uh, Toad or something. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. man. Well, it so, was out there for two weeks? Out there for two weeks. So, so I, 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 I didn't, I didn't realize it. So uh, there's a dude that follows us, again, another like BMX mountain bike guy, and I've, I've just chatted him up a little bit. It, I think it's like Dinks from the Crip or something on Instagram. But like earlier in the – two weeks ago, he was posting up like, hey, one of my buddies is – is on the Rubicon and sick and basically, oh, and he has no power that. steering. And so that. I reposted it and then uh, the Frosty Wheeler dude hit me up and was like, hey, hit up these two dudes and gave me their phone numbers and I, I passed the info along and then I believe the WFO guys and it's like some of the crew right. there right. went and got uh, this Nick Breaks Everything dude. I didn't know it was him. Oh, wow. And uh, they took him out and brought him to a hotel and then he I, I was watching his stories that he, he took a rental car home and then two weeks later same weekend Crap, we were out there wow. came back out with the stuff to fix it so kind of interesting and, and it's a crazy and, story yeah for yeah, sure gee, um, in itself yeah and so anyway so we we were finally up the the whalebone section yep, yep. we let the the big fords go by we let nick yep. go by and then we're cruising because I guess they were also trying to catch up to like another full size like F one fifty or something. Yeah, yeah. Like up the trail, not Correct. not far from mm -hmm. there, right? And they were trying to catch up with him to make sure he was good to help him out. Exactly. So, yeah. so, so it, we fell in line behind them, I think. So we basically and the section after the whalebone thing, it was like it, I feel like it was pretty much smooth sailing all the way to that first bridge, bridge. bathroom. Yeah, right. But so. We're cruising along, Nick's leading, uh, Caleb was in front of me, or front of us, and we get all the way up to where the, the, the F100 yep, yep. group was parked, yep. and then on the radio, uh, we I didn't see... Well, we were, we, we were waiting on Ezra, and we we're like, where's Ezra, where's Ezra? And we're like, hey, are you doing all right? Like, yeah, and then he deal? came in over the yeah. radio, and he... You, could, like, I, you I, could hear it in his voice. He's like, I think we're fucked. I yeah. think I got a broken link. Yeah, he's like, this is pretty catastrophic, and... I was like, we didn't even go through anything crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that was the craziest thing. So he... What was the, the end issue? Yeah, so there? like his... So his two upper links... And this is like a full custom four link gig, right? So his two upper links in the rear, essentially uh, the frame side of the links are bushing mounted. So um, it's not like a, like a left hand, right hand thread kind of thing where you can adjust your links, right? Mm -hmm. So on the tail end of it, which uh, you'll find on like a lot of uh, uh, like track bar setups and whatnot, because one end always has to be like solid mounted essentially. Mm -hmm uh is like a like an insert thread so you you run like a left or right hand heim right and then you have an insert thread mm -hmm. and then that threads into your link and so it basically allows you to like adjust the insert uh, thread a bung i guess we'll call it or whatnot so you can adjust it in and out right to get like your right pinion angle and whatnot sure we don't need to get too deep into that but so anyway so like uh, it turns out that those like insert bungs or, th or, or thread adapters weren't necessarily like seated all the way properly with his like pinch weld in pinch bungs. Mm -hmm. So they ended up obviously after a mile or so or whatever, like, and probably from prior fatigue, sure. decided to basically just break. Yeah. Right. So, so then, so rip the heim. So pretty much like essentially hit like the heim had nothing to grab onto anymore and it basically ripped out. So he's got his, his lower links 
holding the axle in place. Under He's got his coilovers yeah. holding, his drive shaft holding, yeah. but nothing holding the axle on top. Yeah, so apparently back. like before we got there, like before we went back to help him, like he, literally his pinion was like shooting straight up, oh, right? And then he basically put it back in reverse and like it brought it back down and like stabilized. He was able to more or less like get the truck parked and stabilized in sure. like a bit of a rock garden, right? Sure. So, so <laughs> then, but like literally, it, it, like probably one of the more mellow parts of the trail, yeah. right? But it's literally the only spot to go through that section of the Correct. trail. So there we are, what, a mile in maybe? Yeah. And complete, our crew's already blocking the trail. Complete trail right? plug. Just, On a Friday evening, <laughs> like Friday afternoon, everyone's trying to get the buck, right? Complete trail tampon <laughs> is their hard part. And so, oh, but, but when we, we first broke, or he first broke, I should say, uh, there was no one. There was no one behind us. There was no one coming was no the other one. way. Yeah. By the end, it was probably what, what an hour. Trucks, maybe? Was it an hour? An hour and a half. Maybe? Hour and a half. Yeah. It was and and good. so, so we, when we were cruising, we made it up to where the Ford guys were, and we basically we came back. We kind of assessed the situation, and we're like, hey, those Ford guys. Basically, they're you know some pretty custom stuff. We figured they might have some high. Well, we like we dug into it, right? So the first thing was like, okay, we got to pull the upper links off. We got to like figure out what the problem is. Like we need to look at this like in our hands. Mm -hmm. Like why are we going to do this under the truck on freaking boulders on our back? Right? Sure. So pulled them off. What like my first inclination was like, okay, he's running seven eight times with this insert in a in a pinch bung, right? So it's I'm like, oh, it's got to be if you get rid of the insert, it's got to be like an inch and a quarter high or something, right? It's got to be the next size up. Obviously, I forget that there is the oddball one inch shank high, right? So that's ideally what we needed, which is pretty odd. Mm -hmm. So what we reached out to like the the. Full size guys. Well, right? by, re by reached out, you mean Nick drove <laughs> up and yeah. talked to yeah. him, and then exactly. so so Manny with the the yellow F one hundred, he's like, oh, I'll just cruise back. So he drives right. back, right? And he like opens up this box and <laughs> he's got like every. Got, yeah. I was like, sweet. Yeah. All right, we got what we so need. So we're right? we're trying it's different like... shit, and we're like, fuck, we don't have what we yeah. need. Yeah. And then we, uh, I can't remember the name of their buddy that had that blue. I think it was it was it a Chevy or was it a. a a Ford. It was a Ford. F yeah, so so yeah. he had some other uh, Himes with him, and so Nick and I go back up and and we go to where they were parked. They're gone, and so we're like, oh shit! So Nick goes full like King of the Hammer style. Oh, I didn't realize they had left. Already. Yeah, and so and and, yeah. and it's it wasn't even that far. It was like maybe a quarter mile, like how far up they were from where we were broken. And we went up probably like maybe, I don't know, maybe a half mile. We make it up and we see Ultra Fork Jones outside his rig and we're like, what are you guys doing? And he just diffed out and, and the, <laughs> the blue shed, or blue Ford was pulling him up or winching him up. Right, right. And so anyways, uh, Ultra Fork Jones, we, we get what we think we need from the blue truck. Right. He continues on and Ultra Fork Jones is like, Dude, I got a welder, you know, worst case scenario, right. if we had to, right. you know, right. metal glue some stuff, like, so he comes back, and now, like you said, there's probably a dozen trucks coming the same direction we're going, and then probably, what, five or six coming the opposite way. Yeah, we were blocking it both ways. So, sure. long story short, we end up, you ended up getting it back. Yeah, we ended up essentially, in. like, like, um... Basically, we took the like insert bungs, like put, like some guy had a die grinder or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we cut, we like cut them down, used pieces of it as essentially like shims that were still good threads to it. Got it all back together. Essentially, got the truck back together after like an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. and so and then it, to the point, and, and it was probably just as good as new, essentially. Like, and and, and, and to the point, go. he could still keep right, going, right. which was rad because right. you know, again, and he's there. Like for any of you that have kids, it's not ideal to be working on your shit with a seven-year-old. Like they, you know, I'm I'm like full dad mode. Like I, I was taking pictures, not really helping, but I was like. 
hey dude, do you need some water? I get him a water. And then, and, and Ezra's under the truck. Like, I don't even think he knew, but and then I like came back to the truck. His and boy I, was a trooper. I brought him some stickers. Like yeah. I'm trying to keep yeah, him, yeah. Keep no, him his, engaged. His boy and, was uh, a trooper for sure. But anyway, so then we, we end up. Finally we, unblock the trail. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> then we let everybody go by yeah. and, and you know, both ways. And then we, we kind of fall in. And so then uh, it was pretty uneventful all the way up until the Super Bowl, really. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, the the trail was yeah. So what? We made it to the bridge after. Yeah, I mean, what? And then you go up, uh, you go up to climb to like the cell phone tree. Walker Walker Hill, I think it is. I don't know if that. Is yeah, that I, th Walker I think Hill? that's yeah, what it was. So then, and then, um, pretty much after that was was yeah, Super Bowl. I guess. Yeah, so yeah, so it was starting to get dusk at that point, right? Well, but we were like, we want to screw around at Super Bowl. Yeah, right? so so Super Bowl is cool, and and it's like you see that on on Instagram, all over the YouTube, internet, right? and you're like, yeah. oh, like that's that's. And it's so funny when you like, I, I mean, the kind of the, the the general story of this whole trip was like, you see all this shit on on social media, Instagram, online, whatever, right? But it's just always such a different perspective and like viewpoint from actually being sure. there, right? Yeah. And so that was that was cool to to watch. Uh, Hayden cruised up. Uh, he, he I don't know. He probably tried for ten minutes and then finally figured out the line. And it's was it only ten minutes? It felt longer. Yeah, I mean, it, it might. <laughs> I'm have like been. trying to spot for him. Trying. To, yeah, we. It took us a bit to figure out the line. I think once we figured out the line, sure. It just it just took took a bit of momentum to get him going. Yeah, and then it, I mean, if you don't know what the soup bowl is, obviously scope it out, but it's basically this, you know, pretty gnarly rock ledge that's like off camber. At the bottom of it is is you know, basically a giant puddle. So yeah, it's a big mud pit at the bottom. Your of your it. wheels yeah. are, are wet, wet going up yeah. it and I mean, if if you get the right line, it's it's relatively it was mellow. A, it's a cool little obstacle. Sure. I shouldn't say little. It's a cool obstacle. Yeah, and then yeah, there's there be, yeah. <laughs> So then there's we we uh, Hayden makes it up, and then the dude in the that yellow jeep, uh, oh yeah, what, what he he just tries to go. Up, I think the line's called the Soup Kitchen, but oh, basically yeah. he just drives straight up, and then his thing his truck just, just puking yeah. smoke. Oh, puking smoke, yeah. And so then uh, Nick Loose Loss tried for probably twenty minutes, 20 minutes yeah. or so. We were trying. It was just I think it was his wheelbase. Just wasn't well, he's the done right. it before. Really? And that was but it was drier. I yeah. Think he was Right. Uh, and then so after, I, in hindsight, I kind of wish I would have given it a go. But after watching Nick try with literally the exact same truck exact I've got, same rig, yeah. I'm like, uh, let's let's continue on because I was hungry at that point because I uh, ate nothing. It was dark. Night. It was like dark, getting yeah. dark at that point. Yeah. Uh, and so the whole goal, we were trying to make it to Spider Lake to camp. Right. And then so we kind of talked a little bit and we ended up just camping like right just past soup bowl Caddy we, we just pull, soup pulled bowl, up yeah. and and uh we you know pulled out the howl and again there, there's a, a burn ban right now so this thing was freaking clutch you know not not really it wasn't cold but it's just a little ambiance yeah. uh and we we uh made a bunch of steaks and caleb caleb had that hooked up um uh, and just kind of you know hung out around the fire and uh, we God, to, you guys were up to like three in the yeah, morning. Yeah, I think it was I like made a, it to like midnight. I was like, I gotta it, go. It was to like bed. A, it was like a three thirty bender, and we were just yeah. out, you know, having a good time. Uh, so that was that was cool. And then so one thing that I wanted to talk about real quick is the we're hanging out. It's probably like I don't know midnight, and I don't know if it was that late. Maybe it was like eleven, and we see this big military helicopter fly over. And then, which I didn't know at the time, but it, it basically this military helicopter had like a spotlight that was over Rubicon Springs and it was looking for that missing dude. Um, and so we were just kind of like, what the hell is going on out there? And, you know, we didn't know, but then, uh, you know, fast forward the next morning. So we, we wake up, uh, Caleb or, uh. Hayden tried Soup Bowl a few more times. Ashton, Ash, well, yeah, she gave yeah. it a go. I don't know if he, she did it, and then first, she did it first. She did it first, yeah. and then he did it a couple yeah. more times after yeah. that. But uh, anyway, so we're we made it to Little Sluice, 
and that helicopter is is flying over. That's, I think that's when we realized that they were searching for somebody. Yeah, right? and, and it was, it was like, it, they were blasting out over their like mic or whatever. Though. Yeah, and I mean you're in like the dis desolate yeah. forest, and you've got like a big black at, this, at that point, I think we thought it was like a warrant. Yeah, for your for they're like trying to find somebody to arrest. Yeah, them yeah, and so it was so like unclear. They're looking they're looking for Warren Elliott, and it, like you can't really tell what the hell the helicopter's saying. It's like. <laughs> and so the the joke was there was a warrant for Elliot. My name's Elliot. And I was like, dude, I didn't do anything. Like, and so yeah, so that was kind of wild to see. Uh, but so we we go to uh, Little Sluice, and I really wanted to try it, but there was a dude in an old Bronco that he was having yeah. a hell of a time. He was having a hell. Of, well, because there was freaking gear oil like all over the one boulder. You yeah, had about yeah. So know. it was like his ARB or something yeah. was like pumping something, it out, yeah. and so he. He, I don't know, we, we probably watched for, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, at that point, I'm like, okay, what's the alternate line here? Yeah. Right? And so we ended up taking yeah. the alt line kind of out to the right, and uh, then we posted up at Spider. Which is, yeah, Little Sluice is basically at Spider Lake. Yeah. yeah and so, so we, we hung out there at the lake, which was absolutely unreal, uh, and then... At that point, uh, that we, we kind of did like God, a little We spent lunch. like an hour yeah. at Spider Lake. Yeah, we were right? hanging. It was, yeah. it was I mean, it was beautiful. It was like water was glass, warm. water. Yeah, really, you're like up in the alpine meadows, right? And you, you expect to jump in and essentially get like a gnarly shock of cold water, right? Yeah. You know, and literally, I would say it was maybe like 65, 68 degrees. Yeah. Probably. It was like, chill. it was like once you get in, you're like, whoa, but you're literally able to sit in it. Yeah. It was, and it it was, was totally uh, so that was, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Just being able to hang out there. For sure. Um, obviously you couldn't, you can't drive all the way to Spider Lake. So we had to park and yeah, I think we hiked back. And yeah. But it was, I mean, it wasn't, it like wasn't that. bad yeah. as far as the hike. Uh, but so then we we go back to the trucks and we're kind of talking with with Caleb and Ezra because this is kind of the point where it's like all right, right. you guys want to continue on to Buck and and Caleb was talking about not wanting to drop down to Buck which I understand now but at totally. the time I was right. like you know yeah, I don't know <laughs> yeah and so uh, at that point they they went a little bit further uh, with us yeah I think they they. They followed us after Little Sluice. They they like dropped down to what is it? The wedge, I think. They followed us to the wedge. Yeah, yeah. And, and then I think at that point they were like, okay, yeah, it's probably this is probably where we're turning around. Because yeah. what it would by then, Jesus, it was probably midday or yeah, the it was probably it was probably like three o'clock or so. Really? Yeah. Is so, that late so, already? Yeah, maybe maybe two. All right. But anyway, so Doesn't we matter. we end up. Uh, we, we drive. We, I think we like to group photo. I'll see if I can get that uh, yeah. and post it up. But uh, then now it's Jeeps. We basically delete the Jeeps. And now, it's, <laughs> now it's the Toyota Squad, and so we we ended up making pretty good time. Uh, uh, basically yeah, I think I, well, I think at that time too, like we had heard stories because you're you're talking to people on the trail the whole time. Buck was packed. Buck yeah. Lake, right? So, and then Nick was already expressing the fact that he was like, we we should go all the way to Rub Rubicon Springs, yeah. right? So I think at that point, it was like, okay, we need to make trail, right? So I think from like the wedge, basically all the way to Buck, it was like, let's let's go, right? Yeah. And I think at that same time, it was like, it, it, the, the thunderstorm was coming through, right? Yes. So that thunderstorm hit. So we were like, well, we might as well keep driving because we're not going to hang out in the rain. Yeah. Right? And, and, and it was like, when we were at Spider Lake, blue skies, you know, big puffy clouds. Yeah. Like a freaking episode of The Simpsons where <laughs> you're like, hell yeah. And then we're, we're driving towards Buck uh, Island and it's just looks like this nasty storm and we're we're starting we to saw see a lightning, few lightning strikes yeah. and thunder and yeah. it's like oh boy here we go and and, <laughs> and we just so happened to get to the point of the trail i don't know what they call that section of the trail but it was like you're literally crawling downhill down like granite sweat constant but you're, granite and, and it's slab, like right? side hilling and you're side hilling and it's just like the whole time you're just paranoid about slipping in the wet rock, right? Sure, it's sure. Like, well, uh, and, and I forgot to add, so 
we when we Soup Bowl, we drive down to Little Sluice. I drove, and then we go to Spider Lake, hanging out, and then I'm like. I threw Scott the keys. The keys were in the ignition the whole weekend, but basically I was like, you're driving, dude. <laughs> so I'm riding passenger now yeah. in my own truck. Dude, you're like, oh, <laughs> <"No, what's going laughs> And this dude's like, just side hilling. I'm like, I'm going to die. I'm like, I don't care. It's not my car. Right? Just, <laughs> we both got board shorts on because we were at the lake yeah. and I'm just getting just <laughs> dumped on that side. I'm yeah. like, I'm going to stay over here. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. it, it, when it, when it rains out there, it's like a full monsoon essentially. Yeah, it it's, is. It's essentially. a big old raindrops. And so, uh, and, and I was shocked with how good the traction was. Oh, way good, yeah. yeah. I mean, eventually, like, once we got halfway down, we're like, yeah, we haven't slipped once. Yeah. Like, but you have that, you know, you're watching Nick, like, just crab walk, yeah. and you're like, dude, this is sketchy. But it, it was fine. So it makes a buck. Uh, well, so I guess apparently, and so, like, maybe next time we do the trail, I guess apparently you can go to, like, Old Sluice, okay. which would have been, like, a, like, an alternate bypass instead sure. of going down the slabs. Yeah, we, we, that would we be didn't cool. know at the time, yeah. but now we know. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, and, and keep in mind, this is like, I don't know what the exact mileage is, but it's something yeah. like under five miles yeah. uh, from the truck. <laughs> it's taken us, from the it's taken us basically a full day or a day and a half to go five miles. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's like nothing so far has been bad as far no. as for the, the vehicle or driving. Like the We've honestly been doing, like our whole team, other than Ezra's breakdown, which we fixed, like... We've never had to pull a tow line, a winch line, anything. Yeah, it was, it was pretty mellow. Point. Yeah. Uh, but so we get get to Buck. It, like you said, it was packed. Uh, we actually met back up with Manny, the the F one hundred dude, and he was at uh, that one kind of climb. Yeah. And, yep. and we there was a ton of trail traffic that was going ton towards of trail Richard traffic at, at Buck. Yeah. So we hung out for I don't know. It was probably an hour. We were just dude. I feel like up. it was more than that. So like we what we rolled in, we rolled into Buck. You kind of go through the springs, the initial part of it, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're kind of just like, I feel like there wasn't really a trail. It was just kind of like everyone knows you need to get over the dam, right? So Which, by the way, you dropped down the yeah. dam and slammed the slammed fucking the slider. I was like, holy shit! <laughs> no one fucking told me which. It's, if it's I like, needed to be six inches this way, that drop that is a bit Where of a was juice. my spotter? Come I on. I was in the truck <laughs> hanging out. I was getting rained on. No, so it was, uh, oh, so what? Man. Yeah, we get over the dam. It, I mean, basically, so this whole time, like what, from from the wedge or from the, the like slabs or side holding on, it's been raining. Yeah. Right? So all the way to Buck Lake, all the way there, still raining. And I think the, what, we stopped finally because there was a big trail jam. And we sat there for, yeah, probably like an hour or two. And finally the rain broke and it was absolutely beautiful. Yep. And so we ended up just sitting there and freaking Nick breaks out his panini maker. Yeah, he's making us grilled cheeses. Grilled cheeses, that were, which were awesome, by yeah. the way. Yeah, um, little chipotle yeah, it was, mayo, it, it was sriracha. Like, it was like a five o'clock early dinner. Yeah. Kind of like snack, yeah. hors d'oeuvres, we'll call it. Yeah. You know, hey. But, um, but yeah, no, it was, it was great. So, but... I'm glad we had made the decision at that time to keep going to the springs because yeah. just looking around, like it was just packed there, like every campsite was taken. Sure, right? sure. So, but yeah, and then uh, <clears throat> we we proceed on, and and there was a ton of trail traffic. We waited, and, and I was shocked by us sitting there for probably over an hour. Mm -hmm. No one came behind us. We were like at the end of the train. I was super surprised. And I think it was probably because everyone was finding camp spots, right? Sure, At Black, sure. Right? And so we ended up, uh, we right as we're taking off, there's, uh, I think it was a forerunner and a pickup. And uh, we, we chatted with them for a little bit, to both Toyotas. That's right. And yeah. they're like, yeah, we're going to cruise down uh, to the Springs. And we're like, cool, we'll basically we'll let you guys go. And so we get to the top of Big Sluice, and they're meeting up with these dudes with stock uh broncos. broncos yeah and one was like a one's a two-door sasquatch, sasquatch. one was a two-door sasquatch the other was a just a normal bronco yeah a normal yeah. bronco and i was convinced i was telling you on the no, way home i was like, I was it's like not a sport. dude it's a sport <laughs> it's and so the dude these guys uh 
they, we basically were at the top of these big were Sluice. stock Broncos, like stock. And, yeah, it's a Sasquatch. And we so we were we were like, yeah, you guys could go, and the, and the the guys, the Toyota guys were like, yeah, the, you know, the Broncos, you know, they do pretty well, and you know, I, I've seen some of them wheeling. Like, like okay, I, sure. Yeah, yeah, right. it's cool. So it's, what, we're at the top of Big Sluice. Big Sluice, at that yeah. Point, right. Yeah. And then uh, then. Uh, so Big Sluice drops you down into. The, the springs. springs, yeah, essentially. And so, but but Hayden's like right as as they're about right as they drop in, Hayden's like, hey, uh, I want to replace, I want to put in my my transfer case uh, Allen's because for his uh, transfer case mount, he's like my my transfer case. He's like, I basically have been listening to do it kind of flop around like a salmon, and we're like, what? <laughs> Like, why haven't we done this before? And so he, he, you know, gets the tools out and we probably gave him like, I don't know, maybe a 20 minute head start yeah, or something 15, like that. 20 minutes, yeah. And so finally we're ready to drop down Big Sluice. We get to the first major left and there's the, the more stock looking uh, Bronco. Yeah, yeah. And he's like hung up on a corner. This was like the major part of Big Sluice. Now, apparently back in the day, it was, it was much harder. It was much harder because it's like a hairpin left turn and apparently like back in the day there were like larger boulders or the way the sluice was it was like you just it was like super hard you had to like pivot around it, sure right? but now they've like blown it up so it's kind of more like bouldery and you just got to get around the boulders sure right? sure yeah. and so basically the dude's just like hard parked and there he's got his buddy out he's spotting and we all get out. And we're just kind of like, what? What's he's going like on? blocking and, and the was, trail. We can't get yeah, by. And, right? and it was like, yeah. an, I mean, obviously compared to what we're driving, compared to yeah. what he's driving, like for for our Toyotas, it was a nothing section. But for this Bronco, he's all hung up. And so he, his buddy's spotting him, and he he starts to go forward, and you just hear like a, <laughs> and we're, I was just like, what the fuck is that? Oh. And so he's like, I have no no steering. And the dude that's driving starts to kind of wig out a little bit, and yeah. he's just like, "What am I gonna do?" And we're in the middle of fucking nowhere. You could like, tell he was getting like worked up. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I'm kind of like listening, and obviously we don't know these guys. Like you know, you know, we're trying to be cool, or whatever. We just want to get by. But I'm just like, "Hey, dude, like, take a deep breath. It's gonna be okay. You're not yeah. gonna get left down yeah. here. Like, we're yeah. you're gonna figure it out. Like, right. you're gonna be all right." And so. This dude, I, I look at the passenger side, and he's just got his wheels just straight up chalked on a fucking tie, on a rock, <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, here's what you're gonna do, you're gonna put it in reverse, you're gonna start to turn, you know, once once you start to roll back, you're gonna start to turn driver, and you know, he sure enough listens to me. Oh, all of a sudden his steering's back. Yeah. His his yeah. power steering was gone. There was yeah. electric steering, right. I guess it'd be. But, but so, he, he was able to manually steer. Yeah, so yeah. so we we get him out of that area and like in the same breath as he's like stoked to be out there, I was like, hey dude, uh, you do you think you could pull <laughs> off? And like I kind of felt like a dick, but at the dude, same time, we're yeah. trying to make it to yeah. Rubicon Springs before dark. Right. Yeah. And so thank God we did that because that descent. Yeah. yeah. So we go down, uh, we see we we cross cross this water crossing, we see the the other Bronco that was waiting for him. And then, you know, we talk to the guy and then we drive a little further. Hayden and, and Nick were a ways ahead of us. We, we passed through the, uh, w the whole group of the other Toyotas that were there. And there was like a buggy. Yeah. And there's this hard left and it's, there's a big ass tree. Like sheer there's there's drop two off. trees. Yeah. Sheer <laughs> two drop trees. off. The sheer drop off. And it's and like a hairpin left turn to get like down the drop off. <laughs> and the yeah. steering, the power steering, even when the new pump. It's trash yeah, shot. <laughs> and so this guy is like, oh, yeah, I'm going to take it wide. And so he takes it wide and just does not make I'm the like, turn Oh, at yeah, all. I don't have enough steering. And so <laughs> we're like, <laughs> I'm looking out the fucking passenger side and we're literally dead center with this tree. <laughs> and this guy is like, he's got it in double low first gear and so well, like, I can't thing, stop. I can't. The thing's just crawling towards this tree. And I'm like, dude, hit the brakes. And it's just blowing through the brakes. <laughs> And we're sliding into this tree and it's super off camber and it, it's like for like a solid, I would say 10 seconds, shit got serious because we're about to roll. I was, I, I really think if you were not in the passenger seat, 
I probably would have tipped it over. Yeah, but so I'm like, dude, push the clutch in. And so you push the clutch in and amazingly it stopped. <laughs> <laughs> and so, right, we're, we're literally like dead center, probably a foot away from hitting uh, this tree, which would have probably saved us from rolling. Well, so the funny thing about this is like this dude up the hill, right, in the Bronco is having a moment, right? Yeah. This was, this was, <laughs> this karma. This was, this was like totally <laughs> our karma that. moment because it was like, Okay, the truck stopped, we hadn't flipped yet, and I literally had to sit there for like a few seconds and be like, think about this for a second so the truck doesn't go over. Yeah. Like, how am I going to get out of this? And I realized like, okay, we were tipping this far, you know, three inches back. Yeah. Right? So I was like, okay, I just need to go straight back. Yeah, well, we, came, we had, right? I, was like, I, was I was like, like dude, you got to you gotta back up. You, you're like, what are we going to do? I'm like, you got to back up. And, <laughs> and you're like, I can't. I'm like, you have to back up. Like, we're literally, <laughs> we're not moving this tree. And so, sure enough, was, he, it puts it in, he puts it, it in funny. reverse. Yeah. And we like, just creeping back. Like, yeah. you, this... It's, I was in double low, yeah, just creeping double back low to make reverse, sure it wouldn't and it, go. And, it, and luckily it slides over. And so... I forgot to say, but the the dudes at the top, like r they're literally right there, maybe a few feet away from us, maybe like, like fifty feet away from where we're doing this, and they they're you know probably talking shit, but they were giving a shit because the the forerunner just smokes like no, oh more. yeah, so oh, they're shit. like oh like that's you know this that the other thing, and I'm like it's a twenty two RE, it's fine, <laughs> like I've got a three RE, good to go, it's good and to go. So, uh, so they're they're watching us, but anyways, we make it through the section, and I was like, Scott, you got to give these boys a little tap limiter. it up on the red limiter. <laughs> so so uh, we he gives it a little we limiter. We got our adrenaline the, running the, the on thing's that just one. puking smoke, oh, and I'm I'm like slapping the side, like yeah. <laughs> Just clear it oh, out. Just clear it out the valve, guys. So, yeah, so good. then we cruise to the. We're almost down to the bottom. We get to the the shark tooth, and and we pull up, and Nick was kind of waiting for us. Well, so what's funny is like we got through that section, and it's kind of like a. It was like more of like a muddy. Or no, we were like side hilling, but it was more trail, right? Yeah. It was like mellow trail. Yeah, it was all. So we're like, okay, cool. We're like, oh, okay, we're getting down to the bottom of the valley. Like we're good, right? And then you go through this other section, the shark tooth section. Section, right which is like almost another sluice but it's not like it wasn't even bad as far as the, the it's just, just that that one big the boulder dealer, right in the middle right? so so i like see nick all flexed out i'll post the photo but he's like you know just total rti You're doing ramp. a pirouette on this no 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 and then, boulder, then hayden right? so so nick went to the left and then hayden tried to take the right line and so he's like passenger side up on this giant boulder, and the the boulder is like, right. That's right. What, how big would you say the boulder is? Dude. Like half a Volkswagen it's worth huge. of boulder. Yeah, I mean it's a car in the middle of the trail. And so so Hayden tries to go up over with his driver side on that boulder, and he's just grinding the side of his fender on the other side, and he's like, oh, this isn't gonna work. <laughs> so he backs up, and then he tries the other way, but he like is in between the frame and the slider, and so. He's literally like pivoting off of. He was on the drive shaft. Oh, his drive shaft was like screwing against the boulder and rotating, rotating his truck around. And he's around got it. he's got two both oh. passenger side tires are off and his is both both rear tires are off. So it's only all front. you guys were in front, like watching at the front. I was the only one in the back, <laughs> and I was watching his drive line just grind against the rock. I was like, oh. whoa. whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so so and I'm like, hey, hey, stop! You're on your drive line, and so. He pops out for a second, and he and I, and I'm watching the whole truck like teeter, like it wants to roll yeah. with the boulder, and he's like, he was oh. moving the boulder at that point. Yeah, and he's he like, was, uh, oh, let's let's see what happens. I'm like, dude, this Canadian <laughs> like, dude's yeah. built different, and so he just sends it. It was like uneventful. Yeah. you know, he's used to this stuff. But so then you're up. And, I was like, oh great, how am I going to do this and now? And so I'm spotting. Now that he moved the boulder like six inches farther the one way that yeah. I need to go, right? And so I'm spotting you though, and uh, you you go up over, and you end up just slamming down on my. There, there's another rock that's kind of sticking out on yeah, the, the left. Yeah. And so you just smoke my tail or my uh, <laughs> corner light. It's not my corner yeah. light. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that that was good times so, though. So uh, we make it down, make it to the springs. Yeah, we got to the bridge, right? So yeah. right after Shark Tooth was like Rubicon Springs Bridge. Yeah, which is like the famous. So we freaking what hung out there for a half an hour mm -hmm. taking photos or whatever. Yeah, 
Uh, and then it basically cruised into the springs. And, and it was like perfect timing. Yeah. I feel like what? But it, so it was probably like 7.30ish, yeah. I bet. Like right kind of a little before dusk, right? Yep. Or, um, and just rolled in there and Nick's like, yeah, like, cause they have a map. Like as soon as you cross over that bridge, they have a map of Rubicon Springs and like what campsites there are and where to go. And he's like, yeah, I want to camp at the, what they call the slabs. So we're like, sure, whatever. We don't, yeah, we don't yeah, know, right? Good, we're like, dude. go for it. And, and, uh, and so there was a little bit more trail, like in, in and it was, it was actually, I, my mindset was like, we're done. But yeah, there was actually but no, some... it was, it was trail the whole way through yeah. like that. Cause it's been, so Rubic those of you that don't know Rubicon Springs, it's technically private land, right? Mm -hmm. So there's like, it's like 350 acres or something of private land. Um, you typically got to unfortunately like pay to, to camp there, but it's a hundred percent worth it. Yeah. They upkeep the place like crazy. They've got heads all over the place. They've, you know, they obviously like put on all the events mm -hmm. that we were trying to split weekends with, sure. um, and do a bunch of stuff to help keep the trail open. Right. Yeah. So it's all worthwhile, right? Yeah. The money's going to a good, good place. But so yeah, what we, we, Nick says he wants to camp at the slabs, so we like wheel through Rubicon Springs till you get to the slabs, right? Sure. We pull up there, bunch of people camping there already from the weekend because what it's Saturday night. Yeah. Um, most people go for multiple days, I guess. Apparently, and, and we now saw, that we know now. as we're pulling in, we see the uh, the FJ eighty. Oh and yeah. You're like that's that's Cruiser Steve, dude. We met at King of the Hammers. Him and his brother. So, so that goes back Pat. to like just meeting yeah. all these random people, yeah. and you see him out there, and it's like, how cool is that? Yeah, right? that it's was just, cool. Yeah. And so he, you know, we, we ended up camping, you know, like you said, on the slobs, hit the uh, there hit the waterfall, hit the waterfall, at, at dusk, yeah. Kind of, you know, got all the grime yeah. off, and, and that was awesome. The water temps unreal. I mean, and this is just like obviously we'll throw up a photo but it's just freaking picturesque yeah. right like you're right on the stream there's waterfalls on both ends of like our campsite you got the water flow white noise when you're sleeping in that it's just it was cool yeah beautiful that was super beautiful cool. spot yeah yeah and then so made uh some more unfortunately we didn't have the meat man with us but he <laughs> left us a bunch of meat he we made sure to yeah. uh, hijack some before so we, we split up we had a had a bit of a feast and then uh the next morning we wake up and and a bunch of people were rolling out of out of there to drive like up five six seven a.m yeah like, they, boom, they were we're they getting were out, out of town so we're, we're, we're kind of like you know we're, we're, we're like whatever yeah and so uh, we literally had the place to ourselves from like 7 38 o'clock yeah until 10 when we left or something yeah and so we we hung out and we were like oh let's let's go cruise for uh, another swim and we like we're just kind of lollygagging hiked, hiked down the the river a little bit and found and, a different kind of pond to swim in and we saw like a bunch of jeeps cruising through yeah. and, and we're like oh boy this is gonna yeah. get interesting yeah. and so uh we ended up I think what like ten thirty or so. Yeah, it was like the mid morning. Trail. We probably hit the trail finally. And then it, so it ended up being. Uh, I think I don't think we got out of there. I think it was a four hour, to all the way back to pavement, because of a couple things. They had that the the helicopter that I was talking about earlier. So yeah, so the search and rescue mission yeah. became like tri <clears throat> triple as big overnight essentially yes. because they couldn't find the guy yet. Exactly. So that was so that was so the dude's name is Warren Elliott. He went missing on uh, Friday night, uh, and and it was Friday afternoon. Yeah, Friday afternoon at like four. The story was uh, they were doing the Jeepers Jamboree had the event the the, the weekend after that we were there. And so they, the, the Jeepers Jamboree guys and, and many other organizations maintain Cadillac Hill because that's the only road into Rubicon Springs unless you're taking the whole Rubicon Trail. Right. And so they were doing trail work because if, if the trail from, from talking to um, Mike, which was the, that dude in the green yeah. Jeep, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was basically saying that if if the trail is impassable, then they'll shut it, you know, close it, and, and that obviously isn't very good for their events. So, they were doing trail work, and the last this dude was seen was at the very top where the lookout is. There's a big boulder there. He was sitting on the the boulder eating an apple, and uh, 
he was just hanging out. He, his, and I guess he rode in with his son in his son's Jeep. Uh, they come back, like somebody came back and was like, you know, where's, where's Warren? And his cowboy hat was sitting on the rock. And, uh, the guy said that all his stuff was still in the Jeep and there was a cold beer in the passenger seat. This is, this is what this dude told me. Uh, and so that no one had seen from him since. And so that was what that helicopter was when we were at Super Bowl Friday night, they were looking for him. And they then had already started the search. They had started the yeah. search then, and yeah. it's like National Guards looking for him, and yeah. then they they were looking for him on on so, Saturday. So I think Sunday, the the National Guard started helping out. Right? Well, I think I, I I don't know exactly, but I think the National Guard is that helicopter that uh, with a medic helicopter. But anyway, so the search had been going on, and then like you said, more people were coming in. And they had like. You know, hundreds of like search and rescue people hiking in down the trail. Yeah, and yeah. And, and so they they were pausing the tra up traffic to get people down, and then I think that the because it's so remote, they were just flying people in yeah. by helicopter. So at the lookout, they were using the lookout as like a L landing zone or whatever mm -hmm. an LZ. Yeah, and so and then and it was also so it was a combination of that. Two, it was a combination of. Believe it or not, traffic, yeah. right, from everybody trying to leave on a Sunday, yeah, right? And then three, it was just people breaking down, yeah, right? There was a couple of kind of mishaps and breaking people breaking down trying to go up Cadillac Hill. Yeah. Um, but so what? Yeah, so normally I think people were saying it takes, what, two hours from Rubicon Springs Something to get like up that. out to the, to the um, uh, I forget what the, the staging area is on the top. I want to say it's Tahoma. Tahoma something. Yeah. Yeah, it was like two names. Um, but so, yeah, and, and instead it took us like four. Yeah. And, and and the way up, I mean, the trail's definitely gnarly. Yeah. But it, it's, it's all... A good, it's a good climb. Yeah. yeah. And, and your, your... Nick was telling us about it. It's like pretty exposed. So that kind of sucks. Like, right. we obviously don't want to go down. Right. Right. Go down the side of the mountain. There's but, not a lot of turnoffs. There's people yeah. trying to... There's some people trying to come down. There's people stuck and broken there's people go, trying to go up so it's it's just a cluster when there's a yeah. lot of people on the trail yeah, yeah. but but so i mean the, and then the, like you had said the the search and rescue they they had all the the dogs that were looking for them so they they kept pausing from what i understand that they kept pausing the up traffic uh to have the dogs go through but thankfully they found the dude i think it was wednesday or the, was wednesday, wednesday or, or thursday, thursday after thursday? and yeah. And he was at uh, he Hell, hiked Hell all Hole. the way down. He hiked all the way down the river to Hellhole uh, Lake or Basin or whatever. Yeah, yeah and, like and, a and a fisherman guy. picked him yeah. up, like saw him and picked him up, and they they. I guess he just got distorted up. or something. He was off like trying to find arrowheads or something, and it got distorted. Yeah, yeah. and it's like yeah. you you read all this stuff you, online. You, but, uh, who knows what the real story is? <laughs> but right? it's super super weird. I mean, the dude was out there, so. The interestingly enough, the we're sitting in line. We've got uh, Nick, Hayden, and then my forerunner. The dude in front of Nick had this green Jeep, and he was an older guy. He was the the one of the founders, or somehow involved with the Jeepers Jamboree. He's like he was hauling up a uh, cement mixer. Yeah, yeah. So, for trail so repairs, but right? so I I just kind of like casually went up, and I, he had a radio, and I could hear like you know some chatter, and I was like, hey, do you you know what's what the holdup is? And he's like, yeah, I know a lot about what the holdup is, and uh -huh. he he had told me about like the whole cowboy hat with the cold right. beer and all that. Yeah. And this was like one of his friends Jeez. and he's like, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. Like he's been, he's the, the guy's 70 years old and he's been coming up here for 50 years. And I mean, I think about, you know, let's say we go to, let's say we do Mojave road. And I mean, I, I don't know if I got dropped off at Mojave road, I'd be able to find my way back before, you know, something happened. Right. But I feel like points of like landmarks, you kind of be yeah. able to know yeah. an area you've been coming right. for years and years and years. But hey, I, I don't know, you know, who knows? But uh, anyways, glad they found the dude. Uh, but yeah, so we make it out to uh, Tahoma up of Cadillac. Uh, up by, so you basically, yeah, you climb up Cadillac Hill, 
you end up uh, kind of skirting a few different lakes, Richardson Lake or something like that, um, and then it drops you off at the Tahoma uh, staging area. So a lot of people kind of, so you got like Loon Lake at the front end, right, or on the west end of the trail, and then you have Tahoma mm -hmm. on the east end. So like a lot of people um, kind of coming from the east side of the country or whatever, or, or coming from... Nevada or Utah or whatever will come up to the Tahoma side and park the trailers and and the biggest part is just kind of dropping into Rubicon Springs to camp for a few days. Sure. Right? Maybe you go do a trip day trip to to Buck Lake or whatnot. And then if you're coming from Loon, you're kind of doing what we're doing to Buck Lake and go back or you do the whole trail. Right? Sure. I mean there's even even people that will drop their trailers at the Tahoe side and then drive and around the Loon right. and then go out. Right. So right. there's a there's a dude on the there's forum a few combinations. That, that did that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was cool. Uh, after we, we hit the Lake Tahoe and just kind of rinsed off and that was, that was epic. That water was a little colder than the, uh, but it was still, yeah, yeah it wasn't bad, more, it wasn't right? Bad. Yeah, no, it was, uh, uh, it was a weekend of, uh, of, uh, you know, river swims or waterfall showers and, yeah. and lake and lake dips, you know, it totally, was awesome. Totally. It was awesome. But yeah, all in all, I mean, it was uh, unreal trip. Can't wait to get back out there and, and you know. I mean, I, th I think I think we're gonna have to do a yearly trip. Yeah. I think, especially since a lot more of our core group is is you know either either building something now or has something and you know can can sure. try to do this type of trip rather sure. than the desert stuff that we're used to. You know? And I was even thinking like similar to what the, the, the Ford guys did. It's like, they kind of, it seemed like they kind of planned a trip and then it was like, Hey, it kind of like a meet at Buck Island situation. Right. So right. it's like, you can, you can't have, I mean, you can, but I feel like it's difficult to have a, a trail run where you have, you know, 20 vehicles trying to do that. Whereas it's like, Hey, we're going to be, here on these days like make it out and hang out yeah and so it's like where, where you kind of can have like smaller little groups well so yeah so i agree with that and the other thing to it too is is what i realized is like you gotta have a rough time frame yeah doing the rubicon trail you gotta you gotta be like okay yeah we we're gonna we're gonna plan our our rations for three four five two days or whatever it is right but in reality, it's like you could want to be in one place one night. It could not happen. Yeah. Somebody could have broken down. Yeah. Somebody blocking the trail. Uh, somebody broke. You had to tow them back out. Like so, um, one go prepare with plenty of beer. Yeah, yeah. Plenty <laughs> two, of ice. Yeah. Plenty of ice, right? But two, just you gotta you gotta have kind of a nonchalant attitude about it. You know, sure. enjoy, I mean, it's the same enjoy, as the desert enjoy though. Enjoy the time out there. Yeah, right? it's the same you with know? the desert for stuff sure. when we do the point to point right. stuff. But and then it's like for taking the forerunner, we, we were talking about it and it's like how unprepared you know, not unprepared, but just the truck isn't isn't well sorted as far as the storage, as far as the tools, like the you know we were talking about making uh, the half doors have yeah, kind, of, kind of the creature comforts right. and it, right. it, it when you get a, a truck and you're doing you know wheeling it's obviously you can just kind of leave it and just kind of hodgepodge it all but it's just nice to have things more dialed laid out and and it's like manner. with with right. with the mouse or your forerunner it's everything kind of has their spot it's all dialed for that type of off-roading right yeah and, and so it was cool to you know especially we're going down the trail talking about like oh it'd be nice to have this here or this here right. it, it's just fun it, it, for me you know kind of dorking out on it's just fun to kind of you know think about building the tool bags and like where you're going to put stuff and I don't know. So that, having certain tools handy and, and well, and, and so and when we finished the trail, so we're we're on the trail when we were stopped at fixing Ezra's truck. There was a couple of Toyota dudes that pulled up, and this one guy was like, "Dude, make sure you check the front end before you get on the highway." He and he was like, he said it to me like three times, and I was just like, "All right, dude, like I'll I'll check the front end." Like, I just pulled the fucking front end apart of right, that thing right. for the last two weeks prior to this trip. Like everything's good. Yeah. And so that was kind of in the back of my head. And, uh, when we got up to Tahoma, we aired up and we were just going to go down to the lake, which is literally 
a half a mile, mile half a mile, mile yeah. whatever. And so we we're cruising down the we're back on the road and it's kind of a you know little one lane road and we hit a couple bumps and you're like was that a little uh, that's death a little level? shimmy right and there and I was right? like no like it's it's probably fine like we're good and you're so like, no, I own a ship box. then, then like we get, we're like back in the neighborhood kind of because you kind of go through like some houses and stuff. And we hit a bump and I was like, oh shit, They're like this thing is. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we get out and I, I you know, kind of flag down the dudes and I'm like, hey, like we need to, uh, I need to check the front end out because I've got some death wobble. And dude, there was some loose shit on that. <laughs> like the, the high steer arms were loose. The, the uh, oh, both uh, shackle, shackle bolts, bolts were yeah. bad. They yeah. were super loose. And yeah. so uh, that, that, so I would say, Definitely making like a quick toolkit with all the right uh, sockets and wrenches. Something to fix that. learned was just like tighten the bolts every morning. Uh, like and then something else, crap. like like an, just something that just kind of came to mind is everyone's got to have radios. Yeah. Because when you don't see a truck, you know, you're like, hey, what's well, up? So it's funny. We were all nonchalant about it, right? Because we're like, oh, we're not in the desert. We're not all mashing like a mile apart from each other. Sure. Right? We don't necessarily need it. It's okay. We're going to be going slow. But then you realize like literally you could be 50 feet apart, but you can't see crap. You can't see the person behind you. You can't see the person in front yeah. of you. Right. And so, yeah, so how I definitely you... agree that everyone needs to have a radio next yeah, time. For yeah. sure. Yeah. But yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty much that, and so somehow we babbled for like an hour and twenty minutes oh about this <laughs> this trip. But yeah, so uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Appreciate Cheers. it.